Lauren says, anytime I see somebody showing slightly problematic behavior, I'm ready to run and break contact. Is this normal after being in an abusive situation? Yes. And depending on kind of the stuff you're, what you're talking about, it's not even necessarily a bad thing. I think more often than not, it's actually a healthy thing. It's now your eyes are open to realizing that not everybody out there is like you and that your love can't change them. And so we can, it may, can make us feel very hypervigilant where we're like, oh man, you know, uh, I'm seeing this problematic behavior and I just want to run, but is this me avoiding love? Is this me, um, you know, is it an issue I have with trust or commitment or what have you, or is what I'm seeing actually a problem? And it takes a while for a person to really kind of try to navigate that new sense of normal with all of this. But, and here's my take on it, is it's less about trying to figure them out. It's more about trying to figure out what works for you. That takes so much of the load off. I can't even begin to like stress that. Uh, when we can shift from trying to figure out, is this indeed problematic? And then how problematic? And are they a narcissist? And are they a sociopath? And is, you know, eh, like all of this stuff, if you can just figure out, okay, well, what, like, like I was saying earlier, you know, for me, I don't do perpetual confusion. So if, and I don't do abuse. So if somebody's going to be doing, and I don't do emotional immaturity in general. So if a person can't just be straight up with me, if they're going to do silent treatment, if they're going to rage, if they're going to shut down, if they're going to, you know, like just not have that open, honest, sincere, solutions-oriented communication, then I'm not interested. I don't care. I don't care how they grew up. I don't care about their ex. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Like, they need to go figure their stuff out. It either works for me or it doesn't. And that might sound really selfish, but it's not. It's self-care. It's about knowing kind of what works for you. And, you know, for me, it's like, I don't want, I don't want a project. Like, I don't want to have to try to teach another adult how to communicate effectively. Or, you know, that, like, <laughs> I think what a lot of people encounter is with, like, the quote unquote problematic behavior. It's, it's basic adult behavior that everybody knows, right? Like, a lot of problematic people will play dumb. Like, oh, I didn't know that was flirting. Oh, I didn't know that that bill was due on that day. I didn't know. And it's like, you know, if you don't know this stuff by now, then I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not going to take that on. I'm not trying to be your therapist or be your mother or be, you know what I mean? Like you need to go figure all that stuff out and good luck. Good luck to you. So, and, and, you know, I don't, and even, even still, like, I guess the whole like perpetual confusion part of it for me, most, most conversations, if there's sincere intention there can be resolved in a very short period of time, you know? So it's, if things are not getting resolved effectively, then there's a bigger issue at hand. Yes. Maria says, yes, Dana. I love that. I don't want to be an adult. I don't want an adult who needs me. Uh, I'm no one's nurse, therapist, mother, et cetera. Yes. I agree. Tracy says, ugh, and they always want you to heal them. They, they project their BS onto you. Then they blow up at you and heaven forbid, if you ever react, then you're abusive. I think the whole they want us to heal them is it's all part of this whole like pity ploy. That's all part of the manipulation. So it's kind of this whole baby bird with a broken wing act that they do for us to let our guard down. And then it's a way, it's a, it's a way for them to kind of set up this dynamic where we're taking care of them. It's all about them. And so we start building our life around them and make, you know, walking on eggshells around them, trying to make sure that they're okay because they're somehow, you know, wounded or what have you, which may or may not even be real. <laughs> and then um, when that abuse does come out, you know, and we set up boundaries, it's just, 
It's just, it just, it's that, it's that abusive mindset, you know, it's just all about them all of the time. And there is no sincere accountability and there is no, you know, remorse. They, they feel totally entitled to treat other people like garbage. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to not get sucked in the first time, maybe even the second time. But once you're aware of what's going on, it's a lot harder for you to get sucked in. You're going to be a lot quicker to see that it's a problem and to leave a lot sooner, but it can get discouraging, you know, like what that gal was saying earlier about seeing problematic behavior in people and wanting to leave right away. And we can feel judgmental and we can feel like, man, am I, am I making a big deal out of this? Especially if we have other people in our lives that are like, oh, well, no one's perfect. And who are you to judge? And you're just making a big deal out of nothing. And, you know, he, he's not your ex or she's not your ex. And you just should, you know, you've got to trust sometime. There's all kinds of that well-intended bad advice floating around out there. And, you know, your life is not a democracy. Something either works for you or it doesn't. And it's not up to other people to vote about the actions that you take. And it's totally okay. Like, it's totally okay for you to leave a situation just based off of a bad vibe. Like, you don't, you don't need to stick around and wait for them to prove you right, that they, they are cheating or that they can't be trusted or that they, um, you know, what have you. Lilith says, I trust my vibes. Yes. Yeah, it's a big thing. Like that's your first sign, you know? Like that whole kind of saying, like energy doesn't lie. That vibe that you get, odds are you're getting it for a reason. It's probably, it's generally for like a subconscious reason that's not surfacing at a conscious level for whatever reason. And our subconscious mind, our, you know, our reptile brain and our limbic system pick up so much more information that does not make its way to our logical and critical thinking part of our brain. And so when we get, when our instincts kick in, it's generally for a reason. Those parts of our brain are a lot older than the, the prefrontal cortex, like that logical and critical thinking part of our brain. So if you're feeling like something's off, it's generally because something's off. And really at the end of the day, I know a lot of people are going to, you know, might want to stay in a situation because they're like, well, but I'm not sure. I mean, all signs kind of point to that he's cheating or that she's whatever, stealing money or, or what have you. But I feel like I need more valid reason. This is where for me, it goes back to a relationship is not worth mental anguish. If you're not getting clarity, if they're fighting you about stuff, if they're not giving you closure, if there's gaslighting going on, if there's, um, you know, a bunch of squirrely behavior, like normal people with sincere intentions don't act like that. 